What's going on guys? Hope you're ready to race because today you'll have me walking you through my pre-race routine. And just a little note before we get right into it, this is meant to be done after you get out of the warm-up pool and behind the blocks while you're waiting for your event to come up. So with that, let's hop straight into it. All right, so the first exercise that I do when I hop out of the warm-up pool is to get dressed and to get hydrated. That's because our bodies work like high-performance race car engines. They need to be well warmed up and they need to be well lubricated in order to operate at peak efficiency. But from that, I'll head over to the blocks and what I usually start with is some arm swings. And just as a little note, I'm doing about five to 10 reps of every single one of these exercises. So going forward, start with the right arm and then we'll switch over to left. The idea here is to keep your arms completely relaxed and use the momentum of the swing to carry your shoulder through that full range of motion. The faster you go, the easier you'll find it to kind of relax through your downswing and through the first half of your upswing. So we went forward, we went backwards, then I'll bring both arms together for that classic Michael Phelps clap, just not on the blocks and not bent over. We'll do a little bit of a voiceover here. Uh, one thing you want to keep aware though is try to touch your fingers behind your back if you're more flexible, try to bring your hands even higher behind your back. And the last one for the upper body arm swings will be the monkey swing. So one arm at a time, coming over to the side. The idea here is to touch your hand to the small of your neck. And go ahead and see from a behind view. Same idea here, use your momentum to swing your arms through and open up the lats and the triceps. So now that we got the upper body taken care of, we're gonna move down below. I like to spread my feet more than shoulder width apart and alternate touching my toes. Nice tip here to know when you're finally getting loose into it is that you can start looking behind yourself in between your legs. You can also bring one hand in front, give it a bit of a forward lean, open up different angles of the hips. And now, especially for breaststroke events, I'll come into a couple of pulsing half Kozak squats just on each side to open up the groin. And with that, I move from the hamstrings coming over to the quads. So just a quick grab of the foot and a pulsing stretch. There's no need to hold it for any more than two or three seconds. We're already warmed up and we don't want to turn it into a static stretch. We just keep it dynamic to keep everything loose and warm. So with the quad stretched out, it's time to move over to the calves. I'll go up and post against the wall and do a runner's lunge. Coming up on one calf to the ball of my foot and then coming back down is a great way to keep everything warm through the full extent of the range of motion. So coming in with both feet. And while we're here, we'll keep the wall as a supporting friend to do some leg swings. So going forward and backwards, equally work both ends of the swing. And go ahead and switch sides. And just like the arm swings, you want to initiate the kick and then use as much momentum as possible to carry through. After the forward ones, we'll be facing the wall and doing the same thing from side to side. These are one of my favorite kind of warm up stay loose exercises because it really lets you know what condition your muscles are in. If they're tight, you're really going to feel it. If they're loose and fresh, it's going to feel great. The next one's super important for your flutter kicks, your dolphin kicks, and even your breaststroke kicks, and that's to stretch out the front of your ankles. So you want to flip over and point your toes towards the ground and think of dragging that foot forward. You almost want the front part of your ankle to be pushing into the ground. You might need a wall for balance, but that's what the stretch looks like. And one more note is that you can move your ankle from side to side just to extend the full range of motion. This is great for providing that snapping power towards the back end of your kick. All right, so once we did the ankles, I like to open up my hips a little more just to get ready for the start off the blocks. So I'll start with a high knee pull, make sure that your outside hand is underneath the knee and that the inside hand 
is on the shin. So going for both feet. If you need something to hold on to, grab a chair, grab a wall for balance. I'll usually do about two or three on each side. Once that's nice and stretched out, I'll go into the IT bands a little bit by grabbing both hands on the shin and doing a very similar pull up. Also important here is to not pull too hard with the arms. You want to use your entire back to straighten your posture and that'll naturally bring your hands up using your arms almost as chains to lift you up through the stretch. All right, third one for the hips will be a lift to 90 degrees in the knee and a external rotation. So just alternating from foot to foot. It's a great way to keep the hips nice and open and nice and active. You can also feel free to reverse the motion starting from external to internal. So with that, there's only gonna be two more things that I like to do right before I get up on the blocks. And these are more of a mental note than anything else. The first is to shake everything out. I'll relax all my limbs, especially my, my triceps and my biceps to shake my arms out to the side. One arm at a time, sometimes both. And this is a great little feeling. It feels like you're just flushing away all the lactic acid that you might have in your body. And after doing the arms, it'll be the same thing with the legs. You can pin one foot and kind of shake it, fork your knee from side to side. Let all of your quad and your hamstring muscles and your calf muscles relax. And you do the same thing from both legs. So once I'm all completely shaken out and it feels like the lactic acid is flushed away, I'll do the very last thing, which is just my little routine, is to do three hops with completely relaxed shoulders. The idea here is to let your shoulders just sink to the full extent before every single next jump. And that looks like this. So it's almost like you're throwing your hands down to the ground just to completely relax your shoulders. And that's kind of my cue that it's race time. All right, so that's my little warm-up routine. And if you guys have a little bit of an extra time here, I'll throw in just a few more moves. So with the arm swings, one that's fun to do and that also trains your brain is to go in opposite directions. So I like to start out arms overhead and begin swimming. The key with this one is to throw in some upper body rotation. You could use, I'm using my torso to kind of initiate it. And that takes your mind off of what direction your arms have to swing. The other one, especially for butterfly and best stroke events, would be the double arm swing. You're probably familiar with this, just two arms at a time, just like we started out with. And you can also complement it with some backward swings. Also, if we're you know, feeling kind of hopped up before the 50 yard freestyle, a real sprint event, and we want to get our turnover warmed up as well, I like to practice that as well. Doing a freestyle stroke swing, or even a backstroke style swing. Really important during that one is to keep the hips engaged and the trunk rotating. Good warm up for the core as well. And then, the very last but not least, would be my tiptoe squat. So you just kind of squat down, you come on your toes so you're nice and comfortable, and you just lean from side to side. Sometimes I like to put my hands on the ground and pin my elbows against the knees just to press them and torque them out. It's great for opening up the hips, stretching out your quads over here on top, and just making sure that your legs are ready to go so that you can have a very strong starting position on the blocks. So I hope you guys found some use from that. Hopefully you can mix and match whatever exercises you liked and construct your very own pre-race routine. Hope that was helpful. And if it was, even if it wasn't, just go throw a thumbs up on the video. And uh, you'd have me more than thankful for the subscriptions and any sharing with your coaches, other swimmers, you name it. So, see you guys in the next one.